Welcome back. Well, last week, Spencer, was Ravens camp. And yesterday, I got to go, got the chance to go check out the Washington Redskins in their day eight of training camp in Richmond, Virginia. Skins coming off a 4-12 and season, spent another season in the cellar of the NFC East, won by the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, oh, of course. Oh, that's convenient. But finishing at the bottom of the division for the sixth time in just seven years. Second-year head coach Jay Gruden seems confident in year two, but I'm not completely sold. One of the biggest issues this past season was Washington's offensive efficiency, inefficiency inside the 20s, something Gruden says they're really working to fix. One of our focal points this offseason, we're trying to work on our red zone. This, the last one, Colt made it, did a great job ad-libbing. You know, the bad snap, but he ad-libbed, and Spencer did a nice job finding a hole. Uh, the first one, Robert had great anticipation, and Pierre had a great finish on the fade. So uh, there's tight windows down there. you got to have anticipation, and you have to have some luck. I think he meant he wish he had Andrew Luck. Uh, because you're not, what teams he on again? Especially, like, in the, uh, especially in the red zone, because, you know, luck is not going to cut it down there. Windows are getting smaller, like he says. The preparation that they're having right now needs to contribute during the season. You know, like you said, Robert had some good throws inside the red zone yesterday, but I think it's about slowing things down for RG3, getting them back out there, getting them to do some option plays, some pass run option, just something that, you know, kind of cuts down because he's not a pocket passer. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're trying to negate his injuries, but uh, it's really slowing his progress, and he's never going to get back to the rookie year that he had you know, staying in the pocket and doing doing pocket passer things. It's not a pocket passer. Yeah, ever since then, it seems like they've been trying to find his identity and yeah. kind of the identity of that offense. It's and it's been two years of searching with no yeah. answers. Yep. Well, they're trying to find answers for a number of things. It's mm -hmm. no secret they were terrible last year. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Terrible. And they seem to be on that path again because they got to get one thing better, and it's that offensive line. RG3 looked to be on his last leg, or should I say knee and ACL oh, the other go. year, getting beat up back and forth every single time he seemed to be coming back in that pocket and showing those flashes of that quarterback that you alluded to that rookie season. So there's a new Scherf in town, they should say, and the Skins <laughs> drafted Brandon Scherf in the fifth overall pick out of Iowa. The man has looked like a stud so far. Yes. I'm not kidding. He has looked like a man. And he's even up Washington. Uh, that's even against, I should say, that Texas D-line, which may end up being one of the best in football. I just kind of just coming in and trying to improve each and every day. Uh, you know, there's going to be mistakes made, but you got to watch film and just, you know, come out and show that you learn from mistakes. I mean, they're, they're ground and pound football. You know, they want to run the ball first, and it's all about technique and fundamentals, and that's what they're trying to work on each and every day. Tell you what, it's going to be interesting because, like I said, that O line needs a lot of mm -hmm. help. I mean, they had given up 50 sacks last <laughs> year, <grief>. and that <laughs> teams is, don't give that up in two years. That is atrocious. I mean, the line was just ugly, and yeah. the fact was, a lot of people want to point at RG3 and say he was holding on the ball mm -hmm. and kind of they're pregnant. What do you want him to do with this? I mean, he was getting banged up not from running outside the pocket. In I the think pocket. he was just getting banged yeah. up from standing yeah. in the pocket. They need to shore it up. He's a good start. Yeah. Though the rest of the line, as you saw today, didn't look that good against some of the Texas D line. I mean, they were eating him up a little bit in the practice uh, later on that showed today. But I mean, it's it's a start. He's a good pickup. I think he's definitely going to help them. I don't know if it's that flashy, sexy pick that's really going to kind of really start to kind of fix the whole mold. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a step in the right direction. I actually think Redskins fans should be pretty excited. Well, about it definitely it. is. And they drafted Morgan Moses last year in the second round. They're hoping he's a big piece. They're hoping he that he can stick at right tackle, left tackle. You obviously got big Trent Williams, and he's always an All Pro. Large man. But he need, yeah, he's a very large <laughs> man. But he needs some help on that off uh, on that offensive line. Hopefully they take a right uh, step in the direction of a uh, sheriff, right? Yeah, absolutely. The new sheriff in town. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, as you know, guys, there's some guests that practice as well. The Houston Texans made the trip up to Richmond. They also happened, uh, Spencer, I don't know if you know, they have this pretty good guy. His name is J.J. Watt. He was a spectacle to see. He did some side work along with some group work, and he did some 11 on 11. Sheriff in the offensive line did have some wins against him, but this guy doesn't get voted number one player in the league for, any, for just no reason. His popularity ranks up there as well. There was groves of fans there with the 99 jersey on, 1,300 miles away from Houston. Mm. Even Watt was surprised by all the love. Because when you come out here on the road in Richmond, Virginia, a city I've never been to before, and there's people out there with signs, and, and they put in the time to go out and buy a T-shirt or get a jersey, and uh, it's incredible. It's pretty special, man. I can't lie. Someday it's all going to end, and I'm going to miss it for sure. Um, but right now, while I get to enjoy it, I'm just trying to enjoy every second. I feel like now is a proper time to do this. Redskins fans, are you kidding me? Seriously. I get that there's a bunch of fans in every different city, but if you saw the number of 99 jerseys that were there, there were just as many people there to see him as there were at RG3. I'm not buying it. Those people traveled all the way from Houston. 
Come on now, this honestly made me think of those times in FedEx where there are a number of a large, uh, a large number of opposing fans in the stadium, and I can't even begin to think what that means for the Redskins and their kind of home advantage. I don't see a home advantage there. They lost by a total combined 71 points in their final three games at home in 2014. This is a reason why. This cowboy fan in you is just loving doing this uh, right now. I tell you what, the the funniest part about the whole situation was they were selling J.J. Watt jerseys in the retail store for the Redskins. I mean, I get you want to make a buck. The NFL is all about that. But you're going to do that in your own? You're going to sell the opposing jersey in your own building? I'm going to guess they sold quite a few as well. They they probably did, but either way, like that shouldn't be proud of that fact. That should not be a highlight. (laughs) All right, it's time for another quick commercial break, but coming up next, it's time to get to know one of the Shorebirds players just a little bit later. Bird's Nest is on the other side. Keep it locked. Hi, this is Caleb Johnson. I'm a pitcher for Colonel Richardson High School, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider.